Gabriel is a plumber, Omar a mechanic, and Bernardo a stonemason. But salaries are low and work irregular. Therefore, each man has to create his own solutions. It's what's called la lucha, the struggle, the art of daily survival. A combination of pride, resignation, but also the expression of tremendous energy. Some Cubans, eager for dollars, resort to trafficking of all sorts. Gabriel, Omar and Bernardo prefer another alternative. Two or three times a week, when the sea permits, they go fishing off the coast of Havana. They have neither a boat nor a fishing permit. They set out on tire truck tubes covered with nylon netting, a perfect example of Cuban ingenuity and improvisation. Barely a dozen men fish regularly in this manner, and most of them don't venture too far from the coast. Gabriel and his friends have been fishing this way for 10 years. They know by experience that that is where to catch the biggest fish. The technique consists of first catching small fish, which they keep fresh in a makeshift pool attached to their buoy, and which they will use for bait. As soon as it gets dark, they go further out and cast their floating lines. 20 or 30 arms lengths of tackle and hooks with live bait. Then, they remain at sea until early morning to watch their line. Collisions with fishing boats are frequent since the lancheros are not very happy about this clandestine competition and won't hesitate to steal the men's fish and their equipment. Omar remembers having to swim back to shore one day after fishermen punctured his buoy. Six a.m. Gabriel is the last to return. Yeah. 
On this tropical island, where there are no fresh fish available in the market, selling fish can bring in a more than decent income. A 15-pound bonito or a sea bream, for example, can sell for 100 pesos, or about $7, half the salary of an engineer. Hey, pescador. Vende los pescados, mi hermano. Sí, vende. Vende por aquí. Vamos a tomar entre 30 y 15. Bien. Vamos a caer de 30. Pescadito ahora mismo. Ahí está, está. The fish are usually sold in the street on the way home, but some hotels and restaurants are also good customers, since the prices are lower than those of the lancheros. The rest will be eaten by the fishermen's families. Bruja, I'm a cafe. And I'm a cigarro. 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 Venga, lo cogí fue de madre. Cansado, cansado, estropeado, estropeado. Mira, está muy bien, está muy bueno. Tres pacos, rabirrubia, carrabuelo, ronco. Pero oye, fue madre eso. Todo mojado, todo mojado. Ya me está un poco agua. Sí. Que lleva la noche muy fuerte el agua. Está el agua, que no es fácil, que el pescado estaba fuera del agua ahí tanto tiempo. Y coge más olor. No fue fácil de noche. No fue fácil. Ahí está más ropa. Dame un buchito de café. No, yo estoy cansado. Cansadísimo. Voy a tirarme dos mil. Me despierta a las cinco o seis. Gabriel lives with his mother, who has a small pension of 60 pesos a month, and his brother Fidel, who ekes out a living. Gabriel knows that his family's survival depends on him, and fishing plays a major part. For him, however, it's not just a means of survival, but a true passion. At sea, I forget all my troubles. I completely disconnect. My world is reduced to balancing my buoy and the tension of my line. I can stay there for nights at a time, breathing the sea air and looking at the city in the distance. I see and hear everything, 
but nobody sees me. It's a fabulous feeling of freedom. Fishing is what I really like most. When the fishing has been good, Gabriel, Omar and Bernardo give themselves an evening off. It's a chance to get together with family and friends. During the traditional game of dominoes, Gabriel's brother Fidel prepares dinner. The fish the men catch are a major part of their diet since the libretta or ration book doesn't include meat or fish. Only a quota of oil, bread, sugar, oranges and potatoes in very insufficient quantities. Selling their fish enables them to compensate for food deficiencies by purchasing certain products in the import stores where there are never any shortages, although everything must be paid for in dollars. In 1994, many balseros climbed this same wall to set out on makeshift rafts and head for Florida. Oswaldo, Bernardo's cousin, left on a tire tube with two of his friends. They crossed the Florida Straits using flippers for three days and three nights with some eggs, honey and lemons for food. Oswaldo now lives in Miami, but many others died at sea. Bernardo, Omar, and Gabriel have never even considered leaving their country. Fishing without a license is theoretically forbidden. The penalties are high, confiscation of the fish and a fine of 1,500 pesos, or about $75, a colossal sum 
in a country where the average salary is nine dollars or less a month. There is a great deal of tolerance, however, since the Coast Guard, which patrols the Cuban coast, is much more interested in drug smuggling, which is very widespread on the sea. The real danger of fishing is elsewhere. Capsizing on a buoy can happen very quickly. We often fish more than 500 meters from the coast, and out there, in total darkness, anything can happen. We have to be very careful. One day I was fishing, and a swordfish jumped out just behind my buoy. I was so shocked, I capsized. Cargo ships can suddenly appear out of the darkness without any warning. The only solution is to clear the passage with a wide flipper movement. If not, it could pass right over us without even realizing it. Sharks and barracudas also swim into the bay, and they are very dangerous. Stories of buoy fishermen mutilated by a jaw come to feed on a fish are very frequent. This is obviously one of the reasons why Gabriel, Omar and Bernardo prefer fishing together. When the sea is very agitated, we don't go out, although sometimes the wind and the sea swell can come up in the middle of the night, and when the sea is high, the waves can throw us onto the rocks or the Malecon wall. We try to get back to shore as quickly as possible, but sometimes the wind and the currents pull us further out, and that's something else completely. The night looks promising. Two good-sized gallegos have already nibbled at the line. A stroke of luck that deserves to be celebrated with a little rum. And now, the men have to hold on tight and fish until dawn. Thank you. 